In the last video, I showed how to set up GDI Plus in our C++ MFC application and have a control that take advantage of the library. Now, I'm going to talk about a problem that will occur when the drawing is trying to represent something with movement. I'm going to show you the problem occurring and then how to fix it. What we have here are two instances of the same application. We are using the control we created in the previous video, but instead of a cross, it is showing 30 ellipses changing size for each frame. As you can see, the presentation of the contents in the window of the left is not fluid. There is a lot of flickering and it's not pleasant to the eye. This happens because when we're painting to the device context, we're also painting directly to the screen and that can be slow. That might be good for some cases, but not in this case, where the image is more complex or tries to depict something with movement. If you look at the right window, the issue is not present. This will draw exactly the same thing, but in a slightly different way. To do this, we use something called back buffer. This is standard in many frameworks for games, for example, but in our case, since we're still using GDI Plus and MFC application, we will show how this is manually accomplished. Let's look at the code that it's running. In the canvas class that we created in the previous video, we have this function draw ellipses that it is always called and it's not aware that we are using a back buffer or not. The code is not important for our discussion, but the important part here is that it receives a pointer to a device context and just draws into it. If you go to the onPaint method, we see that we have now two ways of performing the same drawing. The first part is similar to the one we used to display our static red cross, and it was fine for that. Just grab the device context, print the contents, and then release the context again. The second one involves a bit more work, and I'm going to explain all the steps in here. First step, after grabbing the device context, is to get the size of our control. Then, we create a new device context. The easier way to do this is to use create compatible DC from the original. This will be our back buffer. Then we need to create a new bitmap to be used by our back buffer. To create the bitmap, we're going to use the method create compatible bitmap and we are providing the measurements of our control. Here is an important part. Despite the bitmap is to be used by the back buffer, the device context that we provide here is the one we get from the original getDC. If you are trying to implement this yourself and it's not working, this should be the first thing to check. After the bitmap is created, select it into the back buffer device context. Only now we can call the method that will paint our ellipses. Now that we have our drawing made in the back buffer, we need to put those contents in the original context. For that, we use the method bitblt, which can copy the contents from a device to another. We provide from where we want to copy, the size of the area, and where we want to copy. Here is where we provide the back buffer. The last three parameters are the position to where it should copy, and the flag to indicate that in this case, we just want to copy the contents. Since we already have our drawing in the correct buffer, we can now delete the objects that we use to create the back buffer. To resume, instead of drawing directly on the screen, which can be slow, we create an area in memory when we paint all our contents. And when we are done, we simply copy those to the screen. This will get you a much smoother result with just a few extra lines of code. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.